It seems like it's been forever since we last saw the Ravens play. And I mean, it has been, especially after watching all these other games, watching all these other teams. It's like, man, we missed our boys, seen our boys on the field, but now we have that opportunity to see them on Sunday when they take on the Vikings. But let's talk about what they need to do, what they better do, and what they need to fix in order for them to come out with a win on Sunday. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to talk about the game we got coming up. Five and two Ravens taking on the three and four Vikings. Purple on purple. We're going to see who wore it best. But in this game, we got two teams sort of headed in two different directions, kind of. Because the Vikings, they are coming off a loss last week to the Cowboys, the Dakless Cowboys. But hey, they still got a pretty good squad all around. Uh, and the Vikings, they just couldn't do quite enough. The pressure was getting to Kirk Cousins. Uh, he missed a couple of opportunities with Justin Jefferson, and they just could never really get it going. Now, the Ravens, they coming off a bye week, but the week before, they got pummeled. They got beat down. They, they got the black beat off for the Raven bird. Uh, so it, it was rough. It, it was disgusting. Uh, but they needed that bye week came at a really good time because that beatdown came at a bad time. But they're here now. They're 5-2. And, and they in first place in the AFC North. And they're one of the top teams in the AFC by their record. So uh, these are two teams who are in some pretty different spots. But it's still pretty early in the season. Now, um, when I watched the Vikings play last week and when I think about the Ravens, how they played all season long, Somebody that scares me is Dalvin Cook. He is somebody that uh, when he's healthy, and he has been, he's on, man. He is money. Uh, and he, like, he has such a quick burst. And, and that's the scary thing about it. And he brings strength with that burst, too. He brings power with that burst, too. So these Ravens, the a problem for them all season long has been tackling. About, well, about 97, 98% of the season, they've had a problem with tackling. They keep going for these big intimidating hits. They keep going uh, for these big shots on the ball carrier, but instead of just bringing them down. And I know a lot of times when your team ends up being down in certain situations or the defense is just, they getting drugged, man. They getting dragged up and down the field and you just, you really looking for that big play. You looking for that spark. So uh, instead of just wrapping up and tackling somebody, no, that's not enough. You want to try to knock the ball out. And then, I mean, you, you think about, you, you start reminiscing about last year, of course, Marlon Humphrey with all those forced fumbles. It worked last year. This year, he got one of them. Um, but it ended up, like, bouncing out of bounds. I mean, y'all know what the whole thing with the Jamar Chase. Even though that, I, Chuck Clark, like, he stepped over it before he touched it out of bounds. Anyway, so it ain't been working this year, bottom line, for, for none of the Ravens. It ain't been working. Um, but they, they just keep going for these big plays on defense and it's, it's, it's made them just give up a lot. Like again, the Jamal chase two weeks ago. Now we wish we would have got the Jamal chase that played the Jets instead of the one to play the Ravens. Like the one to play the Ravens, he should have played the Jets and they should have flip flop. But anyway, that, that 82 yard touchdown, 82 yard, 84 yard, however long it was, that was like an eight yard game, but because they didn't wrap up, because they didn't tackle, made a small play, a huge one. Uh, Javante Williams, I feel like I'm saying his name incorrect. The rookie running back from the Broncos, where he literally dragged Marlon Humphrey like 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 yards down the field. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that wasn't even about wrapping up, because Marlon wrapped up. He wrapped up on that play, but the running back just took him with him. So that's, that's, it, that's where it needs to start. It needs to start with the wrapping up. That's where it needs to start, but you, you got to take the player down too. But anyway, man, um, these Ravens, they have a very tough task. Not just Dalvin Cook, also with the two wide receivers. Because a lot of times when I think Vikings and I think wide receivers, I think Justin Jefferson. And I don't need to see him doing no gritty on nobody. I, I don't want to see it. I got a feeling that we're going to see it. But as long as we don't see it too often, that's what matters most. I do think he's going to get at least one touchdown. I think he's only going to get it one, one touchdown. Um, I don't think they're going to hold him out of the end zone. But I think overall, besides the touchdown, that 
they're gonna do an all right job on Justin Jefferson. But I, I know he's gonna get his. I know he's gonna get his. Um, I don't think he goes for over 100. I think he goes for about 60, 70 yards uh, in a touchdown. Um, but it's important that these corners that they have a day because not only is Justin Jefferson gonna be out there, but so is somebody who the Ravens were looking at last year. They actually wanted him too. They they said what? Unique and Gakwe? That ain't enough. Give us Adam Thielen too. We're going we're going to take a look around at him too. But it obviously didn't go through. But you got to deal with him as well. So Marlon Humphrey, Anthony Averett, Jimmy Smith. Whenever you out there, uh, if they decide to move one of their guys to the slot, Tay Tay, secondary just got to be with it. Now in this game, I, I would love. Now I, I know again, live by die by. I've been saying that I feel like the Ravens should just simplify the defense. And what I mean when I say that is just have guys have less responsibilities. Have like a Dafe away. Have him, Matt, Matt BK, Calais Campbell. Uh, have those guys be your Justin Houston. Have those guys rush the quarterback. Well, obviously on passing downs, but have them rush the quarterback. And then just have... You ain't going to have everybody drop back every time, but I thought I'd say keep it simple for a little bit. Of course, mix it mix it up a little bit too now, but you ain't like, let's, let's to me, again, my opinion, I know some people disagree with it, but I, I say slow down on the, all the exotic stuff, having guys come from here, there, everywhere. Uh, I would say just simplify it a bit because obviously uh, this Ravens defense, it ain't been Ravens defense that it should be. Now, fundamentals are a big part of it. Because, again, you, you make tackles. A lot of these games go a lot differently if Ravens just wrap up and tackle. But they haven't been. So I know a lot of people, whenever we talk about Wink, whenever we mention, oh, he should simplify the defense. Some people, oh, well, look. Look what he did last year. Look what he did the year before. Wink has been really, really good, if even great, with the Ravens. And I understand that, and I appreciate that, and I love it. But that was last year. That was the year before last. In football, in my opinion, it's about making adjustments. Just because something worked last year, just because something worked two years ago, just because something worked three years ago, it does not mean it's going to work this year. And it obviously, like for the, the, the big chunk, it ain't been working. So that's why I say, let's slow it down a bit. Let's get everybody's minds cleared and whatnot. Let's have them safeties. Let's have those safeties be our safety nets on defense to where they are actually the last line of defense. And they ain't always blitzing. <laughs> you might as well put Chuck Logg and Deshaun Elliott at linebacker, man. Because they be around the line of scrimmage so much. But no, nah, seriously, though, I, I, just drop them back. Get these cornerbacks help, man. Give them help. Don't put them on the island. But you ain't got to do it so much. You can do it every now and then, but you ain't got to do it so much. But again, just my opinion. And I know there's people that disagree, and that's fine. I ain't got no problem with that. But it's just from my observation, from my eye test, from what I've seen this year, we got to slow it down a little bit. Let's, let's, let's dial it back. Um, but we'll see how these things go. Um, on special teams, Justin Tucker, same stuff, man. I mean, y'all already know how it goes. Uh, we ain't really got to talk about special teams. I, I do. I would like to see Devin Duvernay just continue, get some more opportunities for kick returns. Uh, well, actually, I, I only want him. What I would love to see, I mean, I don't envision it because it's, it's, it's pretty tough, especially the way the defense has been. But I would love to see it where Devin Duvernay only gets one opportunity for a kickoff return. And that would be after halftime with Ravens receiving the ball. Reason I say that because that would mean that the Vikings did not score at all. Because in order for Devin Duvernay to get kick returns, Vikings got to score. That's the only way he can get kick returns. So hopefully he only has one. And that is, like I said, at the end of, I mean, at the beginning of the second half. But anyway, on to the offense. No slow starts. You cannot start slow. Don't start slow. You can't do it. You just, you're not allowed. There's been enough slow starts this season, and that has had such a big impact on the way these games have been. Remember all them stressful games that they had at the beginning of the season? Slow starts. Remember the beatdown that they, that they took to the Bengals? Slow start. Who else did they lose to? Oh, the Raiders. They had a, like, a wishy-washy start in that one. But so many of these games, they've been starting slow. Don't, don't start slow. 
Now, as far as the running game, um, Latavius Murray probably going to be out. Uh, so it'll be Devontae Freeman, Le'Veon Bell. Um, so hopefully what they do, let's, let's try to get somebody hot, and Tyson Williams as well. Let's, I, again, my opinion, I'm not a coach, but I will say let, let's, let's stick with one running back. Let's really try to get that guy going. So he can pick it up and, and we can really see, okay, if, is he getting into a rhythm? Let's keep the same run. Hey, again, I'm not a coach, but let's keep the same running back out there for a couple of drives. See what he does. And if we're really running like that, if we're really giving him carries like that, let's just see if he can get into a rhythm, see if he can get into a little groove or whatnot, instead of just being like, all right, Devontae, you up. Okay, Le'Veon Bell, your turn. Okay, Tyson, your turn. Instead of just doing that, remember, Ravens, y'all did that last year with J.K. and Gus and Mark. Didn't work. Y'all doing it this year, and the running backs, the quality of the running backs has dropped a lot. It's not working. Let's try to get a hot hand. Let's try, let's try it. Try to get some, again, consistency. Try to get somebody consistency, consistent carries. And, I'll, and my suggestion would be to, for that to be either Devontae Freeman or Tyson Williams. Now we know the coaching staff, how they feel about Tyson. So <laughs> probably going to be Devontae. Well, it will, if they even do it, but I, so it would have to be Devontae. So, um, as far as with Nick Boyle, we've been hearing good stuff about him, but I, we'll see if he gets activated. We'll know that later on today. Well, today when you see this, I'm recording this on Friday, but you'll see it on Saturday. So, we'll know today um, if Nick Boyle is activated or not. Uh, but even if he isn't, Mark Andrews, have yourself a day. It's, it's okay. Have yourself a day. Because last time, it was National Tight Ends Day. Was, you getting all this attention? Oh, yeah. I, I, I plan on going off to celebrate. <laughs> oh, you thought you were going to go off? Bengals said, oh, no. Let's let our guy go off. Mark Andrews, you can watch him take some notes. But Mark Andrews, let's have, let's, let's have him have a bounce back day today. Well, tomorrow. Um, as far as our wide receivers, just nothing but consistency now. Sammy Watkins plays. Sammy Watkins is expected to play. Now, Rashad Bateman, they said he's like a game-time decision. Or he's questionable because he has some groin issue, a uh, tiny minor setback problem, something. I, ooh, I'm a little, this is a little scary. But if I, just, I hope he's okay. That, that's my biggest thing. I hope he's okay for the long run. Because I just, with the groin, it's something that can linger. It's something, that, that's a really big injury right there. And I just hope whatever the setback was, it was super minor. And hey, if it is something that's bothering him enough, is it something that where he's just uncomfortable, something where he would be hurting the team more than helping the team if he was on the field, hold him out. Hold him out. I, I would have zero problem with that. I mean, of course, I want to see Rashad Bateman play because he makes our team that much better. But if he's hurting more than helping, let, let him sit out. Let, let that heal. Especially if we're going to be getting Sammy back. It's like, man, it's like NFL just don't want us to have nice things, man. It's like we, we, we right here. We're getting ready to get Sammy back. It's like, okay, let's go. Then all of a sudden, randomly, oh, Rashad, baby, he ain't practice. Really? Come on, man. Um, but, yeah, Hollywood, same, same stuff, man. I mean, we really ain't. This game, uh, this game is just a bounce back game for the Ravens, in my opinion. It's got to be. It's got to be. They got to just get back in a groove, get back in a flow. And I, I think that they will. I really do think. And, and with John Harbaugh, I forgot exactly what the record is, him coming off a bye, but I know it's just amazing. So this team should be well prepared. Uh, they are the, the better team overall. I think Vikings still going to bring it, but I think Ravens, they end up, I think it's close for a little bit, but I think Ravens end up taking off. Um, I, and I, yeah, I think they win this game uh, convincingly. I really do. Uh, now, if, if it end up being a close game, trust me, I wouldn't be surprised. And I feel like if it is a close game, then I feel like I know what the issue is going to be. But hopefully that's not the issue. Hopefully they just, the tackling just improves a lot. A A lot. Uh, hopefully the slow starts improve a lot, a lot. Cause I mean, I mean, I know y'all tired of hearing me say the same thing, but the Ravens keep doing the same thing. 
They keep doing the same thing. The slow starts and the bad tackling. That has been two of their biggest issues this year. Two of their biggest issues. And this team, like, they, again, they could be really good. They could even be great, but they just got to fix the small stuff. Now, Lamar, hopefully his back is good. Hopefully his body is good. Hopefully he's well rested because you could tell when he, he would be hesitant to run. And even sometimes when he did run, he would not look like the same Lamar. And even though it's crazy because even though he looks slower, he still is crazy quick and got a crazy speed. But he looks slower. And anybody that's really been watching Lamar like that, you can see that he, he has been a tad bit slower. But even a tad bit slower for him, still really fast. But still, Lamar hasn't been the same Lamar. Uh, and offensive, oh my goodness, offensive line, man. Uh, I feel like that that was the biggest issue last week for the offensive slow starts because really all game long, but especially in the beginning, that the their defensive line, Bengals defensive line, was all over Lamar from jump. From jump. I know some people are like, oh man, it's the play calling. No, I mean, yeah, you could have made some some adjustments and whatnot. Had some counter plays to not not running plays, counter plays, but had some plays to counter their uh their pass rush. But the biggest thing was just execution, man, because they, they weren't blocking nobody. And Bengals weren't even blitzing like that. They had like four that they were sending, and they were getting there. Michael Pierce is out, which was surprising because I remember a couple of days ago, they were like, oh, yeah, Michael Pierce looked like he's going to face his former team. And he was practicing, but then all of a sudden he said, oh, he's out. Oh, okay. Um. So, anyway, man, I, I remember... I mean, it's easy to look back, but at the same time, I do remember there were a lot of people who were like, man, we should have kept uh, Michael Pierce instead of Brandon Williams. And I mean, looking back at it, it's one thing. I know some people say the same thing about Orlando Brown Jr. and coming from Ronnie Stanley. Uh, and I mean, it's easy to compare, contrast, reminisce, but we used to have all those guys on the same team at the same time. Mm. It's crazy to think about sometimes. The NFL is a crazy business, man. It's a crazy, crazy business. Uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Hunter, he's out for the year. He's done. Um, I think he missed he missed either a large chunk of last year. Or, yeah, he missed a large chunk of last year, too, I think, with a neck injury. Now he's out for the rest of this year. I forgot what the injury was. So that's another big blow to the defensive line. So Ravens need to take advantage of that. They need to. This team needs to really take advantage. They need to really create mismatches. Really create mismatches. Um, and also need to make sure mismatches aren't created on them. And if they see something, if they see something, say something. You know how them little, like the D.A.R.E. programs, they would do that. And there's some other program. If you see something, say something. Do that. So if you see somebody struggling on defense, you see a corner struggling, say something. Get them help. Offense, defense, got to adjust. Adjustments are so big. So Ravens. Let's let, let let's get this win. It's been a, it's been a little while since Ravens won a game. It's been like three weeks since they won a game. So this will be a, an excellent time to get back in that win column because it's it's been a while. Wow, Ravens fans, we we pretty spoiled in a good way because we're not spoiled rotten, but we are spoiled. And don't act like we're not because Ravens have had a lot of success uh, over the years. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. And Ravens, let's make it happen, man. We out.